Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you, the listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Jeffrey Zilks, Alo, a.k.a. Adam L., Tony Glass, and we've got two new patrons, Brian and Adam. Welcome, Brian and Adam. Yay! Woo-hoo. On this episode of DTNS, we're talking AI. Uh, we're talking all of it, and... Buckle yourselves uh, in because it's going to be a doozy. This is the Daily Tech News for Thursday, September 12th, 2024. From Studio Animal House, I'm Sarah Lane. From Columbus, Ohio, I'm Rob Dunwood. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. I mentioned we were going to talk about AI, and boy, are we ever. Uh, You know, AI, it continues to... Uh, become a thing that more and more of us are dealing with and loving or not loving, and we will talk about all of it. Uh, But this one hits particularly close to home. But first, let's start with the quick hits. On Thursday, Microsoft announced it had laid off about 3% of its gaming division, roughly 650 employees. This brings the total number of cuts in that division to over 2,500 since the company acquired Activision Blizzard for $68.7 billion 11 months ago. Head of Xbox, Phil Spencer, shared the news in an email to staff, reassuring them that no games, devices, or experiences are being canceled, and that no studios are being shut down as a result of these layoffs. Astronauts aboard the SpaceX Polaris Dawn mission have successfully performed the first ever commercial spacewalk in history. Jarek Isaacman and Sarah Gillis successfully exited their Crew Dragon vehicle just before 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time this morning. The purpose of the spacewalk was to test SpaceX's new EVA suits as each astronaut performed a series of mobility exercises before re-entering the capsule, which repressurized after the spacewalks ended at 7.55 a.m. On Thursday, the European Consumer Organization filed a lawsuit to prohibit in-game purchases in titles like Fortnite and Minecraft, claiming unfair practices and violations of consumer protection laws related to in-app transactions. The ECO submitted the complaint on behalf of consumer groups from 17 countries, arguing that consumers are overspending in games due to a lack of clear visibility into what it actually is costing them. The issue is particularly concerning for gamers under the age of 18 who reportedly spend an average of 39 euros per month on in-game purchases. OpenAI released a new model called O1, the first designed for reasoning, which can tackle complex questions more effectively than previous models. While it shows improved performance in tasks like coding and math, it's also more expensive and slower to use compared to GPT-40. The model utilizes a new training approach involving reinforcement learning and aims to pave the way for more advanced AI capabilities in the future. We will talk a little bit more about that uh, in GDI after this show. But for now, MasterCard announced it acquired cyber defense firm Recorded Future for $2.65 billion. This deal will enhance MasterCard's use of artificial intelligence to safeguard global uh, global payment system, which is its own, and, and there are others as well. Craig Vosberg, MasterCard's chief services officer, said, Together we will innovate faster, create smarter models, and anticipate emerging threats before cyber attacks can occur in payments and beyond. The deal is expected to close by the first quarter of next year. Apple's AirPods Pro have received FDA approval to function as over-the-counter hearing aids through a software update. You might recall um, last week that, uh, was it actually this week? Yes, it was. It was on Monday of this week. What is time? Um, uh, That Apple had uh, announced this as something that the FDA was expected to approve but hadn't yet. I was one of many people wondering, well, when will this actually happen? So this is the first time a consumer audio product has been authorized as a hearing aid. The feature will be available on iOS 18, 
That lets users with mild to moderate hearing loss adjust sound frequencies for better clarity. Apple showed that off in its in its announcement. This development also follows the FDA's 2022 decision to allow the sale of hearing aids without prescriptions, making them more accessible. So uh, this is uh, Apple is certainly not the only company who can uh, take advantage of this. But but Rob, we talked about this a little bit in our pre-show meeting. You know, there are folks who 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 are going to take advantage of this and and have good results, right? Oh, there, there's definitely folks who are going to take advantage of it, and and there's a couple parts around this story that I am very uh, interested in. One is that you can actually you can also use your AirPods to actually do a hearing test because so many Americans just adults just don't get it done. I think it's like, you know, only about 20% of us get, you know, hearing tests every five years. So there's that part. But the the part of this that concerns me is that, you know, you know, myself, I actually have a hearing loss and I have family members who, who actually need to wear hearing aids. What I hope this doesn't do is that people say, Oh, I can just get, I, you know, I can just get a pair of AirPods instead of actually going to, the doctor getting your hearing checked by someone who's done a lot of schooling for it and they can determine exactly what is going on with your hearing and then give you if you needed the proper hearing aid i said i, I do applaud this because hearing aids are they're, they're ridiculously expensive so for someone who's just got like myself who just has a you know, a mining a minor hearing loss these AirPods might actually, you know, really help me out if I'm just trying to listen to a TV in a quiet room a, a, across the room. But I just want to, you know, you know, stress that for folks who if you if you do feel like you have any hearing loss, you really should go to the doctor and get yourself checked out and make sure that there's nothing else going wrong that is not progressive and getting worse. Because 100%. like, said, yeah. yeah, the fear yeah. for me is that people will say, oh, I could use my I could use my AirPods. And it's like that's not always the case. If there's a, if there's an underlying issue as to why you have the hearing loss, you want to find out what that is to make sure it doesn't progress. If there's anything you can do to stop it, I, I will say I, I I hear that Rob, but I look at it as more of a intermediate intermediate uh, a device that allows you to have essentially a medical uh, device without necessarily having to sit through an entire procedure. For example. Uh, to get your, to get hearing aids, you do that. It's not just the the hearing test. You got to get your you got to get it fitted. I've known a handful of people uh, in my life that have had to use them, uh, but I think this is more like kind of those non prescription reading glasses you get at the mm -hmm. at the CVS or Walgreens, where like my dad, my unfortunately I didn't get his eyes, uh, but he doesn't need prescription glasses. He just has readers. Um, and he's in well, his Well, that's 80s. a prescription of sorts. Well, a prescription is you go, they check your eyes, they write you uh, a prescription right, for a particular. But, he yeah. just uses readers. Like you just go, you go to the, mm -hmm. you go to the little turnstile, and you pick the one that fits you. And I think there is an ease of use and accessibility to this that I think will be more beneficial uh, than just you know having uh, the downside of people just like. Shrugging the shoulders. I got this. It's good enough. I don't have to have major checks. I mean, not to say, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I mean, they're they're the AirPods Pro um, being able to help you with uh, some sort of mild to moderate hearing loss sounds great on the surface. Rob, you're totally right that you know if there is an underlying issue, is this going to get worse? You know, is is there something else involved? You got to go to a doctor. But it's kind of like when my Apple Watch will say like hey, your blood pressure seems high. Yeah, uh, and you didn't seem to be, you know, running. <laughs> you know, I get that every once in a while, and I'm sort of like, okay, um, that is, you know, it, something, something to, you know, just, just keep track of. But it doesn't change uh, the fact that I should go to a cardiologist, you know, if there was, if there was a, an actual problem. And, and I think that there, there are a lot of things that, you know, Apple wants to do this hardcore. I felt like their, you know, the Glow Time event was very much like, b get scared. <laughs> Your health is at risk. We're here to help you. Mm -hmm. And 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 that, you know, that's that. It, 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 listen, if Apple gives you good data, it's it's not a bad thing, but it it doesn't replace what it, we've we've already got going on and and i think people should understand i don't think apple is looking at these as these are a replacement for the bell and howl ear you know hearing aid that you know your your grandfather got uh but 
you know, again, these are just an intermediate de- device because people have these conditions and it's not either you're, you're totally deaf or you can hear perfect, right? It's a spectrum. So right. this could be very much of the, this will help you out when you're at the dinner party. You know, we've, my parents used to have customers who had poor vision. They didn't, they weren't legally blind, but they couldn't drive, yeah, right? And so- they needed some assistance. And this is more of an assistive device rather than uh, a, a full-blown um, medical you know, uh, appliance. Yeah, I, I like your analogy, Roger, to the readers, um, which is a great one. Because you know, if, you just, if you just need a little bit of help, these things are probably great for that. Which, like I said, for me, this would probably work. Um, but if your readers, if, you, if you're getting beyond like three, three and a half, four, five, if you, if you need that kind of correction, you might want to go to an eye doctor to find oh, out yeah. what your actual prescription is. Oh, and that's just what I would, that's just what I would warn yeah. here that, because I, you know, I, I do wear one and, you know, I, I have family members who do. So it's kind of a sensitive area for me. And I, I totally 100% agree with you, but if this allows, you know, a family member to be, uh, a, an engaging you know, be able to engage in a conversation that involves them, you know, that they can actually hear. They're not constantly mishearing things, either from a lawyer or from a doctor. I think it's a positive, right? You know, just mm-hmm. having enough information so a person can say, make an informed decision because they understood everything that was said. Well, and the the example that Apple used was it was somebody's birthday, right? And, you know, the, yeah, it was, you know, the their mother was... Um, on the other side of the lawn and was talking and saying something really nice. And because of the AirPods, um, that person was like, oh, I can hear what my mom is saying. It was a, it was a very, it was a very lovable thing. Um, that that is very cool. Yeah. It's very cool. It's very cool. I think that, 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 that is, that is just, just one way that, uh, technology that we want because it's cool. Uh, for example, I don't know where my AirPods are right now, but um, <laughs> but I mean, I use them on a daily basis. If that can help me in any way, um, that's amazing. So let's change gears a little bit and talk about a different technology, one that I actually want. Digital IDs are available in popular mobile wallet apps like Apple Wallet, Google Wallet. The problem is each of the states is its own has its own schedule for when these things come out. And some states have them, a handful do, a handful more have announced that they're coming out sometime soon, but most states don't have digital IDs yet. That might be one of the reasons that Google Wallet is soon to add the ability to digitize your U.S. passport. When it comes to digital IDs, each state's DMV is the issuing party responsible for verification. Google, however, will ensure that all the data on your digital passport ID matches your physical passport and such is not a digital passport uh, or is is not accepted as an actual passport. It's not a government document. So Google is working with TSA and you'll be able to use uh, this digital passport ID at various checkpoints. You can also use it for NFC to tap or you can use the QR code to scan at scanners. (laughs) But once again, it is not an actual government document. So you still need to carry your physical passport as a digital uh if you have the digital version with you you still need to carry a physical one with you in case they ask you for the actual id um all that being said physical or not sign me up I'm, i am for anything that will help me get through tsa lines quicker with less stuff in my hand so if i can just take my phone and and scan something or tap it and then and move through the line i'm all for it uh you know what say you sarah i say yay that's what I say. Um, I haven't been in an airport recently. In fact, man, I'm going on two years of not being on a plane, which is so weird for me. But, um, but yes, uh, I have gotten used to the, you know, the idea of you've got your QR code or just whatever else that, you know, from, for me, because I use iOS, it would be, you know, in Apple wallet, or maybe I just pull up something on, um, an email in my phone you know, I go through, we're, we're gravy, but I would, I would be, I, I would feel insane if I also didn't have my physical passport or driver's license or, you know, whatever other form of ID I need, um, for that particular trip. Um, just because I need that backup and that's what you do need. It's, you know, it's, it's not just, you know, me feeling like, well, I need a backup, but no, you do need that. This, this actually doesn't work on its own at this point. 
but but if, if all goes well, there's no flags raised, it can sail you through a line that much quicker. I'm I'm still of the even let's say uh, our uh, uh, argument's sake that it works perfectly like the way it's supposed to. I would still carry a physical ID. We well, have to. Yeah. Well, it's be, um, imagine you either lose your phone, you forget to charge it, or something, and it's not working. Uh, when you get to the gate, you're going to need to pull out a passport, passport card, uh, you know, uh, enhanced driver's license, uh, what have you, and this, you know. Until this, until this is gets the full uh, uh, explicit uh, um, uh, agreement from uh, the the relevant authorities. I mean, you 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 could show up and say, "Hey, I digitized my passport. Take this TSA." They can look at you and say, well, "I, I mean, need your passport." The whole the yeah. whole reason that you need the physical passport is if anything feels sniffy, then yeah. you know they're they're gonna have to yeah they're gonna have to see you know the the real deal. But the the idea of this is. Yeah, you don't just leave your wallet at home kind of thing. We're not there yet. Yeah. Well, we're, not, uh, well, we're not there yet. For and, some and, things but... we are, but not not for this. But it can just uh, help uh, the the process of of getting signed in that much easier. Yeah, In the before times, um, I was on a plane once or twice a week. Um, so there are times when you're in line and it, it, it doesn't matter what time of the day you're traveling. There's just going to always be that person is not a regular traveler and they have all kind of documents and paperwork and stuff when you're trying to get through security as quickly as you possibly can, because you were running late to the airport. So for me, what, what I really like about this is that you can use it with NFC and QR codes, particularly the NFC. NFC is pretty darn quick. Usually, mm -hmm. if you if it's if your NFC on your phone is working and you tap it, that happens very quickly. So if even if it's only certain um, TSA checkpoints, and I'm almost certain they won't be anywhere in the airport that I fly out of, maybe ones I fly into. Um, but the ones that when I, when I'm coming home, if I can just tap my phone. And that whole transaction is done. It saves me literally, it saves me six or seven seconds. I am just happy because I got through quicker and I didn't have to pull out a passport or pull out a boarding pass because those are electronic now or pull out anything else that I would have had to have used. Yeah. And, you know, you say six or seven seconds and people are like, I mean, six or seven seconds, that's all you save. But it's it's when you are stressed and tired and traveling which, you know, we've all been there, right? It's like, that does matter. That stuff does matter. I, yeah. And I will I've say been this... in lines at O'Hare with six or 700 people in line. So six I... or seven seconds is a long time if you could speed I... that up for all those people. Right. I will also say this is, you know, th this is kind of an implicit indictment of how slow government agencies are on implementing this so that it is across the board and it is cross compatible with with what the different agencies um and i i think for a lot of emerging technologies or even established ones but to kind of roll it into into our everyday life uh some a lot of companies will kind of have to take the initiative to kind of if not get the ball rolling to kind of push it along quicker now, I don't think that uh, this is available on the on the iPhone as of yet. Now, the iPhone, I know that you can put the, the the passport app on there so you can at least have a picture and your number and you know when it expires and all that kind of good stuff. This is a little different because it does do the QR code and the, the NFC. Um, and then also Google announced that it is adding digital ID support for more states in the coming months. Iowa, New Mexico, and Ohio will join Arizona, California, Colorado, Georgia, and Maryland who are online today. So when you name all those, it's like 20 percent of the states, you, you know, I, the rest of the states have got to get on board. And it's probably going to still take years and years before you could just use a ID in any state that you're in. Yeah, well, you know, I, I remember the first days of um, Apple Pay, <laughs> you know, where, you know, it, it, depending on what supermarket I was at, I was like, can I use Apple Pay here? Like if for the, some weird reason I didn't have my wallet with, with me, which was very rare, but it happened every so often, you know, and sometimes it was like, no, only Samsung Pay. And now all of that stuff has become streamlined. I mean, it's not perfect. There are many places that you can go 
in and they're cash only. They don't care about any of this stuff. But it is becoming the norm. And mm. and, and I I suspect that um that what we're talking about as far as using a virtual version of your ID um, in places where, you know, it really matters, you know, where you might be traveling internationally um, will also become the norm. Well, if you have thoughts on this or anything else that we talk about, one way to let us know is in our subreddit, submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. See you there. All right. I mentioned that we were going to talk about AI in the show, and I was not lying. <laughs> so uh, patron David wrote in, a few weeks ago, I emailed in to ask you if you thought that AI music was going to be the death of the music industry. You said no. Well, I'm back being a doomsayer again. I've just been playing around with Google Notebook LM's ability to generate what is basically a podcast episode. Now, David goes on to say, I've been thinking about buying a pair of Ray-Ban Meta glasses. So what I did was grab links to all the reviews, load them into Notebook LM, and ask it to generate a conversation for me. Within minutes, it created a podcast episode where two cre uh, characters, one sounded like PJ Vote, uh, <laughs> which is, uh, that's a podcaster that many of you might know, discussed the glasses with jokes and a great back and forth, almost as good as you and Sarah almost. This is uh, uh, patron David talking to Tom. Okay, so what we did is we had it ingest some information that we were going to use for our show, and the results may surprise all right, so we're diving into a whole bunch of you. recent DTNS stuff today. Like we've got summaries we're going to look at, episode descriptions, even September's guest list, uh, all curated, you know, just for you. It's kind of like your all-access pass to tech news. We'll break down not just what happened, but um, why it should matter to you. Okay, so first up, something that's probably got a lot of you saying, hold on, what? It's that Android 15 delay. I mean, everyone's been waiting. Yeah, and this is this isn't just like a small thing. This delay is a pretty big deal, actually. Michal Rahman from Android Authority he uh, quoted his source saying Google will roll out the Android 15 update for Pixel sometime in okay. the middle of October. So that's not Tom, that's not Rob, that's not Roger, that's not me, that's not Joe, that's not Amos, that's none of us. But it's a podcast that if you were to listen through you would hear some some little, you know, some kinks, you know, here and there where you go, oh, that's not what, you know, they would say or, you know, certainly not what I would say, but not, not bad, not bad. It's Sarah, it has filler words. It's they were saying, um, and like, and, you know. I know, but That's that makes yeah. it feel right. human. It, yeah, it made it feel. It made it feel good. Uh, F Fy, it's not just filler words. It adds at least on the versions I did. I I ran like three PDFs and a website through it. Uh, it will add background typing, like keyboard, like type, 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 like someone searching through it just to kind Which of add that podcast like flourish. our show yes <laughs> like oh so i mean in our post uh, post show uh conversations you know it's like who was typing you know 15 minutes in oh sorry i was typing i had to you know um okay so a little bit more about google's notebook lm it features an audio overview uh capability that can generate a podcast a podcast like discussion based on uploaded notes so variety of notes it gets ingested and then it becomes a show. Two AI hosts summarize the material and explore connections between topics, uh, trying to provide a conversational experience. Um, you you may like it, you may not, but it feels pretty darn real. Only supports English for now. Google reminds people they should always be cautious. AI may sometimes provide inaccurate information, um, can't be uh, interrupted during its discussions at this point. But um, when I listened to this this morning, and this is something that uh, in our Discord, uh, Tom actually sent to, to, to the group, and I listened to it, and I was like, what the heck is this? Who are these people? <laughs> and he was like, well, they're not people. It's Notebook LM. 
And I was pretty floored. I mean, to the point where I'm not... I, I'm not doomsday, um, you know, to go back to our our patron uh, David's David. point. I'm not doomsday enough right now to say, all right, well, we all just have to get other jobs. But it was the first time that I was like, oh, I, interesting. I, this, I is, say, this is pretty good. One of the things you notice, having listened to three, like on top of the one that Tom did, of, of which everyone listened to, I did three other versions, two based on PDFs, one of those PDFs being the Dragonomicon from D&D, which is like a monster man, but just for dragons, uh, and like a subreddit about uh, tipping, uh, a, th- a subreddit thread on tipping. And it's really good. It's very natural, but it's natural in a canned sort of way. Mm-hmm. For example, if you've trained someone to do some sort of hosting or emceeing or anchor position, but in a very rote fashion. And that's what you get. After listening to several variations, it, it feels all very sameish. Um, and that could definitely be altered down the road, but I think, uh, I think w- what this does signal is that um, in the future, people will be listening to more, uh, listening for more unique uh, 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 yeah, things in the podcast that isn't just two people talking. Well, Maybe- it's it's like I mean, how many times have you watched? And again, this is this this format is not going to work for. Uh, It's only going to work in certain, you know, newsy formats where it's sort of like information first. We are presenting information to you. But how many times have you seen, uh, you know, someone on TV, you know, um, and, you know, you're kind of like, yeah, they didn't do anything wrong, but there's not really much there personality wise. Yeah. Um, As I listened to this, it was like, this is actually really good. When, When I just think about the technology for this to be the first iteration of this, it's actually pretty good. And it's only going to get better. So so who knows what this is going to sound like in a year, in two years, in three years. I do think, however, uh, Sarah, you hit the nail on the head. Th- this works for our content because we're very, very newsy. And we're going out and we're finding very well-established news stories where, the, where there's multiple sources that these LLMs could go out and grab that information from. For podcasts that are people who are getting together and they're just discussing what's on their mind, that's going to be a little bit more difficult to recreate because you, you need the people for that. And, they, and unless unless those people have created so much conversation that you can just approximate what you think they would say, which these LLMs, I'm sure we'll probably get to that at some point. I think that those kind of shows would be a little bit harder to do this with. And, and the big question is, what are listeners going to want? Um, are they going to be cool with listening to AI or do they want to make sure they're listening to you? Well, and, and that, I mean, that's, that's, that's a great that's... question. You know, I think, you know, for something like, you know, daily tech headlines that Rob, you and I do every week. It's like, I mean, if a robot's doing that and the information is right, does anyone really care? I mean, it's not a like personality driven format, but for a show like what we're doing right now, it is. Mm-hmm. And and that that you you could replicate it, but you you can't replicate it in in a way that is going to be impressive. I mean, the, the, what I what I will stress is this will probably alter the formats of some podcasts to move away from things that can easily be wrote and wrote read uh, in the same mm-hmm. way that some YouTube channels, there was kind of a big stir like five years ago when people started using the generated narration for YouTube videos. So the person didn't have to narrate their own YouTube video and it worked for some things, didn't work for a lot of other things. Uh, and so I think what you'll see is you'll find a, a, a portion of the audience that are just fine. Like I just need the news. I don't care if it's an AI voice. I don't care if it's Rob's voice. As long as I get the news they might be happy with this for everyone else who listens because they want the personality that could be difficult. Even if the persons involved have to write their own lines and they have someone else voice it, that's still someone being involved uh, with it that requires them to, uh, to put their effort or, or their, their stamp on it, their influence. Yeah. The other thing that I think too, is that, I, I would hope that people will want the thing. It's like, you know what? I want to stop listening to Sarah, Rob, and Tom, and Roger. And I want to start listening to AI 
try to sound like Sarah, Tom, Rob and Roger, you know, when they could just go and listen to us. I hope that that is what happens. It kind of reminds me of that old movie with Rodney Dangerfield movie. I think it was uh, back to school where he was <laughs> basically faking a term paper and he got the author of a book to write the term paper on the book. And the, you know, the instructor said, no, this is, he never would have said it this way. It is like the guy that actually wrote the book said it that way. This is what immediately came to mind. What, what would you rather hear the people who are actually saying it or the robot that is well, approximating yeah, what the yeah. people might say? It's like, if there, if there's an AI Rob and I'm like, Rob, are you okay? I mean, you're you're not saying anything wrong right now, but you don't seem like yourself. <laughs> like, it's like we really, we, um, we're you know, many of us who are uh, in this line of work or you know enjoy other people's lines of work have to kind of ask ourselves, like, do we care about what a unique voice is and means? I mean, would you care if a piece of article of clothing you had was actually knitted together by the fashion designer or just designed and then said through an automated process where a nameless, yeah, faceless no, a group point. of people yeah, put it together? Point. That's a good yeah. point. Well, folks, if you want a recap of the week's tech headlines with insights into how technology affects and disaffects communities of color, then check out the Tech John, where host Rob Dunwood, that's me, Stephanie Humphrey, and Terrence Gaines dive into the top tech stories of the week delivered from points of view you don't always hear in mainstream media. New episode land Tuesday afternoons. Find it wherever you get your podcast or head over to thetechjohn.com. Um, the, that, uh, the tech John is one of the best examples of, you can't replicate this with AI. <laughs> you guys, they go struggle your, pers in there. your, your personalities, you know, no, it's, it's, you, you can't be replicated. Um, it's a really, really good show. Uh, do check it out. And also patrons stick around for the extended show. Good day, internet. Um, if you're not already, uh, concerned that AI is scary, <laughs> that's kind of how I felt before we went into the show today. Uh, open AI's new model can fact check itself kind of the new normal we'll talk about that more you can also catch the show live monday through friday at 4 p.m eastern 2000 utc find out more dailytechnewsshow.com forward slash live we'll be back tomorrow talking about how food dye can produce see-through rats with dr nikki ackermans and lynn peralta the dtns family of podcasts helping each other understand Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>